So a little while ago, we looked at the Weatherby Meat Eater, their thousand dollar rifle, and we were impressed. Accurate, durable, affordable, and just downright cool. Today, we're gonna have a look at what these guys can build for three and a half thousand pounds. And that three and a half thousand pounds is a carbon mark. Comes in this cardboard box, rather unassuming for the quality of rifle that is inside. So let's throw it together and see what it's like. First things first, the bolt goes in, not through any protrusions, but you just pull the trigger. And there's a little block here, very simple looking design. Drop the trigger down, the bolt slides in. That is extremely efficient. And the first thing you notice actually, and what this action is fairly well known for, is how short that bolt throw is. I think it's like 54 degrees. Extremely efficient. Originally designed, I believe, in conjunction with Sauer, but now it's made in Wyoming. Sheridan, Wyoming, in the USA. First impressions are good. This rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor weighs in at just under seven pounds. It feels like a rimfire. What's gonna be interesting is how recoil management goes, because often with light rifles, it can go badly. But I've got a friend with one of these and he's already let me into the secret that it's not that bad. You have a large bolt knob. This gun is Cerakoted all over the metal work. So you've got dark black Cerakote and you've got flat dark earth or Coyote Brown. It's quite nice. There is actually, and I'm gonna get this up right now, a UK specific version. We actually have a special treat. We have one in full armor black Cerakote. Obviously we all know what Cerakote is. And if you don't, it is a thin film ceramic coating that enhances weather resistance, corrosion resistance, and abrasion resistance. It's essentially a good finish to put on your firearm. In front of all of this rather cool Cerakoted, oh, the bolt's fluted as well. I know, I know it doesn't make much of a difference, a touch of weight saving, but it does look awesome. In front of all of that awesomeness is this, a carbon fiber barrel. And actually that is a misnomer. It's a stainless steel thin fluted barrel and then it's carbon fiber tensioned, meaning they wrap carbon fiber around it. 95% like of the carbon fiber doesn't even touch the barrel to allow air inside to move around and cool it. But what it does is adds rigidity to an otherwise thin barrel, meaning quality or accuracy with strength. Both things we like. And these rifles are accurate, or at least Weatherby say so, because they give you a one MOA accuracy guarantee, meaning that at 100 yards, you should be shooting sub 0.99 inches. And if I can do that, that means it's A, easy to shoot and B, accurate. I'm kind of looking forward to it. The rifle is done with a floor plate here as opposed to a detachable magazine, although as with every rifle now, I'm sure you could get an aftermarket detachable magazine if you felt the need. But to be honest, it's nice, it's sleek, and how often do you actually genuinely need to change your mag that quickly? Not that often. And you can always top feed. At the end of the barrel, it's threaded in 5 8 by 24, and it comes with a muzzle brake. So you can stick on their factory muzzle brake if you want, and that is going to reduce felt recoil by something like 50%. Alternatively, in the UK at least, we're gonna be putting a sound moderator on there. I've actually got a DPT one that will fit this when we're at the range which should do kind of the same, but also take a lot of noise and make it slightly more sociable. I'll tell you what, that bolt throw and the actual movement back and forth of it, very nice, great tolerances, but let's be brutally honest, it's a three and a half thousand pound rifle. If those things went up and together, we'd all be turned off. They got that right. The stock is fiberglass and it's got this rather nice sponge painted pattern on. This one is the black UK edition. And to be honest, I, I am drawn to the stock on this. I do like the two-tone stock. It's quite pretty. Prettiness aside, it's obviously gonna be very rigid, very practical, and the thing we all care about, it has a full-length aluminium bedding block. That's good news. We, we like that. All right, boring technical bit over. Let's take this out into the field. But first, uh, let's find a scope, some mounts, a silencer, sound moderator, and I think we'll get it fitted up for a bipod as well. It would be pretty thick to have a six pound nine carbon fiber rifle and fit it with a big heavy bipod. So I'm gonna drill this for a Spartan gunsmith adapter for a Spartan bipod. Ooh, which to be fair are about the best carbon thing in the biz. These are quite simple to fit. Drill a hole in front of your sling stud, 
drill it to about 13, 14 millimeters, 19 millimeters wide, aerodite, stick it in. The right cutter for the job can be tough. I used to have a really nice one and like everything nice in the world, they just disappear. So we're gonna do this with fairly basic tools. First things first, remove your bolt, make sure the rifle is safe and clear. You just pull the trigger, the bolt falls out, put it to one side somewhere nice and safe-ish. Using the correct turn screw, screwdriver, undo the floor plate screws just a touch, pop that out so it's not under spring pressure. That will make life a little easier. Now we're up close and personal with the metalwork. Actually, the finish really is delicious. I love the way the Weatherby logo is etched in. It's just clean. The edges are sharp, but not sharp to hurt you. Like it's, it's a well-manufactured gun. Well, they came out easier than expected. The beauty of having an aluminium bedding block is, generally speaking, that you don't have to tension it to death. It says, that should just now, ever so slightly, tap out the action. And in there you can see your full length aluminium bedding block that runs all the way up the sides there. That is a nice thing. I mean, it's not groundbreaking, but it's a nice thing. Bedding block there runs all up the sides, keeps some rigidity around the side of the action there. Fully bedded front lug there and back. Like, it should be very accurate. It's nicely made. There's a lot of products on the market and there's nothing wrong with them inherently that are perhaps style over substance. I think this is a good dose of both. Rifles are so simple, aren't they? It really is just a barrel, an action, and a trigger, and a bolt, and some way of holding more bullets than one. The Trigger Tech trigger is really nicely produced. It's a nice big sealed unit there with the adjuster in front, so you can adjust this from two and a half pounds to five pounds, and all the way through the brake's very clean. I haven't tested where it's at, but I've just tested it, and it's my kind of trigger, so probably about three pound, three and a half pound, I would have guessed. Now to drill holes in a uh, three and a half thousand pound rifle. What's quite pleasant is that front stud is threaded into a nut that's been let into the carbon fiber stock. It's a nice touch. Again, these little extras are, are what you're paying for, the things that perhaps you can't see. Ta-da! This is the magical method I use for getting in the middle of these weird rounded stocks. Because doing it by sight sometimes then doesn't work when it's all lined up. It's um. It's quite complicated really, especially when you have multiple screws and the stock in itself isn't actually in line. You think the stock is slightly offset, you've got the raised cheek piece, you've got the palm swell. This front bit should be symmetrical, but they're not always. So I get a piece of paper, I cut it to the edges, I wrap it round, fold it in half, mark a line, and that is the middle of the stock. Right, we're happy with it about there, so I'm just gonna make a, a tiny little mark just so I can go back to the same place. And here you thought you were gonna get a review of the gun, not Johnny Carter faffing about, trying to remember how to use his hands. Look at that, so we've got a mark so we go to the right place. We wrap this round, end to end. Sometimes, the stupidest things you do are inherently the most intelligent complicating things, doesn't usually work. And to be fair, I have fitted thousands of studs. All right, I'm gonna see you when I've made this hole substantial. So you left me last in the workshop, the first one I've ever messed up. And just to say that metal bar is, uh, turns it into a slightly different gravy with the extremely soft compound around it. Somebody always has to be first. But luckily the owner isn't that pissed off. What Johnny's trying to say is, Rich, I had a bench drill accident and uh, it's your rifle's fault, not mine. Look at that. That's actually quite smart. And it locks in place, unlike the pulley-uppy ones that I've had and, and then they, you go in your bag and they come out not on the number and you go out and you miss over the top of the deer That's because it's it. wound. 140 20, grain 140 precision grain. match. I've got some 120 grain and some 127 grain hunting ammo, but being, being an ammo shortage, I'm, let's uh, try not to get through it. Let's, let's use the stuff that I've got some of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Insanely easy rifle to shoot. It's good fun, isn't it? Never shot it before, just went in through an inch without any real efforts.
It's a nice caliber. Um, they've thought about the stock design. First thing I said, like, it actually is right. You can get He's some sort of decent in the right place. They haven't done adjustable stock on purpose because it adds to weight. The point of this is that it's a lightweight rifle. They do do it in titanium action, although that one is steel. Um, adds quite a bit to the price of the titanium, doesn't it? It adds about, the titanium action is about a grand extra uh, retail. Um, it is a bitch to machine. It's bitch to machine, and such cost um, money. but it's light, it will never rust and it will last, last and last and last. Not that those won't, but a titanium action, you'll always re-barrel rose. A steel, you've probably got the choice to do it or not, titanium action. If you've invested the thousand pound to get titanium. It, it's an action of a lifetime, isn't it? The barrel is a shrouded barrel on that gun, so it's a stainless fluted featherweight barrel underneath that. And then they tension the carbon sleeve over it, so they torque the, uh, the end cap, if you like, to create tension on that. With a couple of bridgy points in the middle. Um, no, that's completely free. It's literally only touching completely at the end. Free completely free-floating. Completely free-floating The whole the carbon barrel thing is far too complicated. Um, there's lots of different technology going on at the moment for, with, with regards to carbon barrels and, and people with their own ideas. They all seem to shoot. No one's, I've not, not seen a crap one yet. Strangely, and I know that you as the importer will, will slap my wrist for this, I was expecting to love the fierce, which is a video we've also shot today that'll be coming out later this whenever. I actually prefer that. Do you? And I mm. don't know why. Could be that I had a really strong emotional attachment to it this morning. <laughs> You've been through a lot together, you and that yeah. article. Um, yeah, well, well, maybe we'll do a blooper video. Um, have you actually got it on film, it flying off your bench? And... No, no, no. No, there's, there's a nice little war wound on the rifle from this morning. Um, but, you know. As gunsmith, is... Adapt to fittings go. It's not the best job I've ever seen. The car's there, just um, kick it in. <laughs> it's in there. Um, I mean, that, you didn't want to see what state it was in before. I, I don't. No. I really don't. I asked him for photos, like evidence. I didn't take photos. He didn't take photos. Um, Needless to say, that metal bar running through the middle is really good for the structural stability of the rifle. As a rigid stock, you can't beat it. I suppose in terms of putting gunsmith adapters in, you probably need a, a mill. Yeah, not... I, I figure there is, a, there is a specific way to do this rifle. And, and you didn't do it that I, way. But I'm glad you told me. <laughs> I'm glad that you let me know that all of the other people well, that have fitted Spartan gunsmith well, adapters to this rifle. <laughs> that was that. The big question, is this rifle worth more than a meat eater? Short answer, yes. After we'd finished the official filming and we started to have fun, this rifle came into its own. I just sat down with it and took sitting supported off my knees. I headshot a muntjac at 250 yards, the target. I then comfortably shot the three inch 200 yard gong twice. A rifle shouldn't be that easy to shoot. Maybe using it prone wasn't the wisest idea, and you're always trying to get the accuracy versus other guns, but that's not what this gun is designed to do. And for me, that's what makes this gun stand up against others. It is so unbelievably easy to shoot. Even with that little mod on the end, that's what hunting guns are all about, right? Making it easier for you to humanely dispatch what you're after. The fact that it looks really cool, that's just a bonus. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye, and we'll see you soon.